morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and I was always told I had a voice radio, so today I am bringing you another two new GX cards. Now, just this very morning, I showed you Decidueye GX, a very exciting looking card with a really good ability. I broke that card. As far as I could tell, I was the first person in the US, Europe, etc., to show you that card. Now, I'm not quite so on the ball with this next one, but I assure you, ladies and gentlemen, I say one, I of course mean two. Now we are going to go and look at Incineroar and Primarina. So I'm keeping my promise to you, ladies and gentlemen, of bringing you an analysis quick and on the ball of all these new GX cards as they come out and giving you more than one video in a 24-hour span if the need arises, like it clearly has now. So... Let's roll along with this. Make sure you tell your friends and click that like button, etc. The more love I get for doing these videos, the more keen I'm going to do to knock them out as soon as they become, shall we say, obvious. New card comes out. Let's do a video. And as we're talking about the final evolutions of the starters from Pokemon Sun and Moon, remember that I have done my ranking of the three final evolutions. There is a link in the description. It will come up at the end of this video. Click it and have a look. It's not going to help you win the Pokemon trading card game, but it should be fun. So, let's start with Incineroar. Now, first things first, Incineroar saved this entire line because Litten was rubbish and Toracat was worse. Incineroar, as a Pokemon, on, I am a fan. But I like this card. 250 HP, like we talked about in the previous video with Decidueye. This is about what we're looking for for Stage 2 GXs. Now, we have got Tiger Swing, 2 Fire and a Colorless, 80 damage, plus 50 for the amount of heads you can flip for 2 coins. Flip a double heads, you do hit 180. You're going to do that approximately 1 in 4 tries. Most of the time, you are going to be hitting 130 for free energy. Now, that in itself isn't bad. 130 for free energy is not bad. There were some people telling me in the previous video I was a little harsh for saying grass double colorless for 90 was rubbish. 30 or 130 for free energy is okay, but this is not guaranteed. One in every four attacks on average, you're going to hit 80 for free energy. That is really not good. It's not a bad attack by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not great. It is what I would call distinctly average. One thing that hurts it here is the fact that it's two fire and a colorless and in the standard format we no longer have blacksmith we no longer have ember though we do have both of them in expanded so accelerating energy onto the fire pokemon is not as easy as it might otherwise be although anytime you're accelerating energy we've got to mention baby volcanian hey nick who is pretty good at this but the attack i like much 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 better for Incineroar is Hustle Blow. The first attack, one fire energy, 20 more damage for each benched fire Pokemon. You fill up your bench, that's five Pokemon, that's 110 damage. Five times 20 plus 10, 110. You pop a Sky Field into play, and all of a sudden you've got eight bench Pokemon at the most. Then you're doing 170 for one fire energy. Do remember, though, that you're rarely going to have your entire bench full of fire Pokemon. As it stands at the moment, you're going to really want to play cards like Shaman, for instance, in order to draw cards. Now, you could always use a card like Ninja Boy to turn that Shaman into a fire Pokemon, but then it's just turning your deck a bit clunky and a little bit slow. So I like this attack. I don't think this is a one-hit KO attack. I think it is largely a two-hit KO attack. But look, and I've put a link to all of my GX videos so far in the description of this one. The GX Pokemon, on the whole, have higher HPs. We are looking at 190 to 250 HP. And these GXs look so good, they're going to see play. So, I don't think it's like when we needed to hit 170 to KO EXs. Nowadays, I think we need to hit 190 to 250 we're talking to hit KO playing Skyfield and having six 
fire Pokemon on the bench with a couple of Shaman. Hitting for 130, that sounds a lot more reasonable, and that's going to be two hit KOs. While we're talking about this, it is worth pointing out that fire type looks like, and again, we don't know everything from Sun and Moon. We don't know exactly what the format's going to look like going forward. But with Lorantis looking really good and Decidueye looking really good, Grass Pokemon, and of course we got Forest of Giant Plant, which is always going to make Grass Pokemon better than they might otherwise be, allowing that quick evolution, it looks like Fire Type is going to be a very good type to be, being able to hit those Grass Pokemon for weakness. And 130 when you're hitting for weakness is 260, and now we are rocking and rolling. Now, it does give up two prizes. It's a GX. That's a problem. It's also a stage two. And there's no shortcut here. There's no forest of giant plants. There's no Archie's ace in the hole. You've got to do it the old-fashioned way by manually evolving or using rare candy. But one of the things I love about fire Pokemon nowadays, you can afford to take an extra turn or two to set up while you use baby Volcanion to do 20 damage and attach two fire energy from your discard to your bench. Now you can use Scorched Earth the Stadium for fire Pokemon, which allows you to discard energy ready to recover with Volcanion, while of course drawing extra cards, but the problem here is Skyfield for Incineroar really is good. I suppose you could play a mix of stadiums, I would generally be in favour of playing Skyfield here. So you set up with Baby Volcanion, and you play Incineroar, and you hit for really good damage. Most of the game, that first attack, Hustle Blow, will be fine, but you've always got the Tiger Swing attack, which can help you out here. And let's not forget, of course, Volcanion EX, who can be quite good. He is both fire and water type, so in a mirror match, he will hit for the water weakness that most of these Pokemon have. That's quite nice. The ability is going to be less good here, because it will work for the basic Volcanion, but it won't work for the Stage 2 Incineroar. But even so, that's not the end of the world. You can still discard the energy with the ability and use Volcanion and recover those energy with Volcanion. And it may well be that the basic here, that Litten has a half-decent attack, in which case we can use Volcanion EX's ability to beef it up. I mean, 10 damage for one energy is a fairly standard basic that evolves. Pretty rubbish. But you use free Steam Up abilities, now it's 100 for one energy. And we are rolling. And then we come to the GX attack, this once-a-game attack. Remember the rule, ladies and gentlemen, any GX attack once per game, that's your limit. Two fire and a colourless, 200 damage plus burn. Now the new burn rules, for anyone that's missed it, burn is no longer going to be flip a coin between turns, if tails you take 20 damage, it is going to be flip a coin between turns if head you are no longer burned but you always take 20 damage while burned so minimum assuming your opponent isn't turning off special conditions here using something like Magiana minimum you're doing 220 and that's going to go up by 20 between every turn until your opponent hits ahead. The way it's been stated at the moment is you take the 20, then you flip the coin. I am a fan of Incineroar. Now, it doesn't have the amazing ability that Decidueye does. That's a little bit of a shame. But that first attack, I've said this dozens of times throughout my videos and my podcast, PTCG Radio, which, as a side note, is available on iTunes. Anytime you can attack... For one energy attachment, it is always much, much better. Yes, I know the fact that it's a stage two and you've got to use rare candy as a pain. I get that. But oh my goodness, I love Incineroar's first attack. The second attack, if you flip heads, it's quite good. It's not bad in a pinch. And the GX attack, it's like most GX attacks. It's most of the time going to get you a one-hit KO at some point during the game. And I suppose, as I often do, I would be remiss if I didn't mention Shame in EX here. Hustle Blow, full bench of 5, 110 damage, boom, you've KO'd a Shame in. Assuming, of course, that all your bench are fire Pokemon. And now let's have a look at Prima Arena GX. This is the fully evolved version of Poplio, and I have made no secret of my love for Poplio. Check out my video, like I've said, with the evolved starters to see if Prima Arena can keep that role going. 
Am I going to pick Poplio as my starter? I've made a video explaining it. That's where you get any info. 250 HP again is pretty gosh darn good. Water type is fine. Maybe cards like Incineroar and Volcanium will be popular. But it's a weakness to grass here that upsets me. Because Lorantis looks very good. Decidui looks very good. I keep mentioning those cards. I'm sorry. They are probably the two best GXs we've seen so far. Bearing in mind we don't know the attack cost for Solgaleo and Lunala. So that weakness hurts. I would be much happier if it was weak to something like Metal. But it's water not ice. So why would it be? However, Bubble Beat, double colourless energy, 10 damage plus 20 times the amount of water energy attached to all of your Pokemon in play. This sounds an awful lot like Incineroar's attack, but with water energy rather than fire Pokemon on the bench. I just don't know how you're getting the energy out here. I want to love this attack, but let's take, for instance, Xenaeus Break. Xenaeus Break has a very similar attack, although being a break, it's essentially a stage one rather than a stage two. Okay. And it does more damage depending on how much energy you have. Okay. But you've got the Xenaeus from X and Y, allowing you to go ahead and pop that energy on the field. I'm not sure how you get all this water energy out. I mean, sure, you can use Max Elixir on whatever basic Pokemon you have on the bench. That's pretty cool. But really? I mean, you're going to want 5, 6, 7 energy on the field to really make this good. Now, you can use the XP share to keep the energy on the field once you get it on the field. But... I just don't see how you're getting that many basic energy out that early in the game. Now, we've talked about Lapras GX, a pretty good, competent water GX that looks all right. I suppose we've got Manaphy to give you free retreat, although that's just a two-prize liability. But really, I'm just... I'm not loving this attack. I just don't see how we're going to get enough energy in play. Now, of course, you can use Lorantis, attaching from the discard, but then there are better partners for Lorantis than Primarina. So, I just... I really want to love this attack. It fits that profile of one energy attachment, off you go. I'm just sitting here and I'm looking at this attack and I'm thinking... Where does the energy come from? You've got Lorantis, you've got EXP Share, you've got Max Elixir. But if Xenaeus Break is too slow, bearing in mind that Xenaeus has the regular Xenaeus which attaches to from the deck, I really don't see how Primarina is not going to be too slow. Now, I suppose Primarina is 10 plus 20 for each energy, but it's water energy, so Xenaeus even allows you to have double colourless. I want to love this first attack, but I don't love it. The second attack, water, water, double colourless, 120 for four energy, not good. There is a saving grace, however, and that is the fact that you get to discard an energy attached to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Which means it's not one of those annoying attacks where you get to discard an energy, oh wait, I've one hit KO'd them anyway. You can get the KO on one Pokemon, 120 is enough to KO a Shaman, while discarding energy from the bench Pokemon that they're going to try and use to return KO you. I just really wish it didn't cost four energy. And then that comes to the GX attack, again double colourless energy, and it's a very strange one. Most of them do one-hit KOs, Solgaleo helps you to set up, and Decidueye helps you to recover. Primarina is healing. Heal all damage from each of your Pokémon. Okay, that sounds pretty good, but you're probably going to be playing a water... I mean, if you're playing Primarina, you've got to be playing a water deck, because you need that basic water energy to make her first attack good. And you, you can just use Rough Seas to heal 30 damage per turn from all of your Pokemon. Or indeed, if you're playing a water deck, how about you use Mana Fee EX to heal 30 damage from each of your benched Pokemon? See where I'm going with this? If you're using a water deck, healing isn't a huge problem. So why would you want to use your one and only GX attack for the entire game to heal? Now, 
there is a big caveat with this. Look at how the game is going. It looks like we are heading to a situation where we've got larger HP Pokemon and we're not one-hit KOing. Now, if we get to that situation, there is going to be a new skill introduced into the game, which we don't use very much at the moment. That is going to be retreating and switching out your Pokemon and healing them and essentially keeping your Pokemon alive so that your opponent doesn't take their six prizes. In such a game, there is definitely potential for an attack, for a double colorless energy, one attachment that heals everything. But honestly, uh, it's pretty much my reaction to this entire card. Now we have got Archie's Ace in the hole, which means we can get Pre-Marina out on the very first turn of the game, or whenever we feel like it, as if it were a basic. Maybe... This could be a one-off tech, I suppose. The first attack's all right. The GX attack has its uses. Maybe a once-a-game tech with Archie's Ace and the Hole. Just literally play one Pre-Marina GX, one Archie's. But you have to play Archie's as the only card in your hand. Now, in Expanded, we've got the combinations of Jirachi EX, Battle Compressor, and Execute that make using Archie's Ace in the Hole much, much better. In Standard, we don't. I don't know how you use Archie's Ace in the Hole consistently in Standard, or to put it another way, I just don't think you do. And that's why I get frustrated with Pre-Marina GX. First attack, kind of good, but you need way too much energy. Second attack, you know, you can KO while getting rid of energy, but it's really quite expensive. Third attack, yeah, it's good healing, but why don't we just use Rough Seas? Every one of Pre-Marina GX's attack makes me go, oh, that looks kind of good, but... I don't see any of these three attacks which make me go, yes, I like it. When I look at Incineroar, I look at its GX attack and I go, well, that's going to be a one-hit KO at some point during the game. And I look at its first attack and go, I can, I'm not going to put eight Pokemon on my bench with Skyfield, but I can put five or six and be hitting 110, 130 with one energy attachment. That sounds pretty good to me. I like the typing and the weakness ain't so bad. But when I look at Primarina, I just go... I don't really want to use any of those attacks, the typing's not great, and the weakness looks like it's going to be horrific moving forward. Now, I'm sounding a bit mad at Primarina right now, and I don't mean to, I love Poplio, because here's the deal, if Primarina is good, I get to play four Poplio in my deck. And anyone who's been watching these videos or listening to my podcast for a while now knows that I would relish the opportunity to play four Poplio in my deck. I just don't like it very much. So in a head-to-head -head fight, I have got to give it, in terms of which is the best GX, I've got to give it to Incineroar. Now, if we actually had two players, one playing Incineroar and one playing Primarina, Primarina would probably win because of the weakness. Having said that, it still looks like it's going to be slower to get big damage on the field than Incineroar. Although, let's face it, Incineroar, he's going to be hit for weakness the whole game. But in pretty much any other matchup, I'd rather be playing Incineroar GX. So, that means three GXs looked at in one day. Don't forget to check out the Decidueye video if you haven't done so already. Don't forget to check out the... Pokemon Sun and Moon Final Evolutions ranking video, which uh, you should be a thumbnail link coming up in the next couple of seconds, and the usual rules apply. Comment, like, subscribe. It's YouTube, you clever people. You know how it works. Follow me on Twitter, at the Wossy, and the most important thing as always, look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.